early bird or night owl? Everyone's one or the other, right? I'm most definitely a night owl. I love this time to work. I can't stand is when you get disturbed, you might be in the flow and then uh, something happens, your phone rings. Um, there's no chance of that at night like this. No one's, no one's calling me at this hour. Um, so I can just be in the zone, constantly being interrupted these days. And even if you have your phone on airplane mode, um, people can still WhatsApp you and uh, send you messages on social. Um, I'm mean, sure there's a way to like prevent that, but um, I don't know, I'm not very techy. So like a busy mode or something. I could probably find out, but if you know, pop it in the comments. Um, but yeah, just this time is so nice. It's everything's quiet. Um, I think this is when I do my best thinking and I tend to be a lot more productive. Um, Amy, on the other hand, is uh, very much not a night owl. She is uh, she's an early bird. She's not even an early bird. She's just an early to bed and then kind of lazy in the morning. Uh, but she certainly gets up earlier than me. Um, so to avoid us never seeing each other, Sunday night, Monday night, those are my two late nights. Um, and then sometimes I maybe get a third in uh, on a Wednesday or Thursday. But we keep the weekends free for us. Um, and I think that works pretty well. Anyway, uh, last week we had the lorikeet beak. Um, and so this week we're focusing on the eye. So um, let's dive right in. Birds tend to look alert a lot of the time. So the eyes are nice and round. So I'm just getting that outline drawn out with an orange and red. Here I'm just indicating where the shadow from the eyelid is cast. And you can take a dark colour like a burnt carmine to outline the very edge of the eye. using a very light colour like flesh and working inwards from the edge to highlight that first band um, and then working in some orange on top. And then that second band and the pupil. See, I made a little mistake there, came in too close to the pupil, uh, but because we haven't been pressing too hard, we can fix that quite easily. Just gently building up layers, throwing in a bit of yellow to lighten things up. You'll want to keep maintaining that sharp reflection. Um, it's kind of like doing regular de-weeding to make sure no pigment from the other colours gets into that area. I use this Pit Pastel White for that. By dabbing the pencil down, it helps to create texture within the eye itself, um, working in pretty close quarters here, so you have to be quite careful. And I like to throw in quite a vibrant blue in and around the reflective part. And then keep layering, softly. We're going to want to spray it soon because we're getting close to maxing out our layers. Um, so here's a little spraying demo from a previous video. This is the fixative I use, De La Rowney, colourless fixative. Um, there are other brands, but this is the one I landed on and it does a pretty good job. One of the things you don't want to do is be in a confined space because otherwise the fumes will get to you. Shake it up first, always shake it, and then just hold it upside down like this and spray just to make sure it's not all bunged up in the nozzle. And you don't want to spray directly at it, um, otherwise too much fixative will go onto the work and it will cause it to be waxy and um, you can't then work over it. So um, go from a distance and one of the things I like to do is to just kind of spray and let the fixative rain down on the piece. 
because again, if you're spraying directly at it, it's too forceful and um, it'll just dissolve all that detail that you've been working on for so long. So here we go. This was quite early on. I haven't even got any paintings up. Do leave it a good 10 minutes before coming back to it, um, just to let it dry. And now we're working on top of that sprayed area, doing a bit more gardening with that white. It's quite dark in the region below the eyelids, so we can press a little harder here, uh, but not too hard. And then that yellow again to keep things light in this region. Notice I'm sort of caressing the pastel strip from time to time. That's just to clean it of any uh, darker residue that may have hitched a ride. I find a good practice to keep the whole piece in mind all the time. So don't just work on one area until it's done uh, before moving on. Um, so those feathers will be the subject of next week's video. Just building up a bit of definition in those areas around the eye. With the eye there are a lot of layers. Um, the glassy nature means that you want total pastel coverage um, to achieve that sharp, smooth reflection. You want the pigment to get into every groove of the page. I guess the beak is more of a matte finish and the eye is like a gloss. Keep going around the edge with the darker colour helps to make the eye pop. Because of all the layers, the eye can take a bit of time. Uh, it's tempting to rush through by pressing hard, uh, but really you want to avoid doing that. The pigment has to gradually blend between layers. Think of it like building a snowman head. It looks a bit rough around the edges to begin with, but as you pack in more snow, it slowly starts to become circular and smooth. Um, it's a similar concept here. It's, it's very much like sculpting with this medium. See that eye is now starting to look nice and sharp. Um, we're just adding the final touches. I'll probably do this again right at the very end, but uh, we're pretty much there. And there you have it. So next week we'll be focused on these feathers.